I confided in you that during the Halloween party, I shit my pants. I did not shit my pants. It just releases, dude. Sometimes uh, you don't have control of your sphincter, and that's okay. I haven't shit my pants in over two months. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the Hardcore Podcast. Uh, this would be number three, technically, but this is going to be side quest number one, which is what we're going to be calling our video game episodes. That's right. Side quest number one. So the first game we decided to uh, kind of do a deep dive in or semi-deep dive on was uh, Bayonetta, the first Bayonetta. Yep. Which was uh, developed by Platinum Games. Um, Bayonetta is a hack and slash. If you are familiar with hack and slash games, you've probably heard of uh, Platinum. They've also developed uh, Near Automata. They've worked on, I believe, all three Bayonetta games and I think uh, so, yeah. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Yep. I believe it's called. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they've got plenty of hack and slash games in their arsenal. You know, they know what they're doing. So. It's a good genre. Um, yeah, it's one of your favorite one genres. One of my favorite genres. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we referenced it in a uh, another episode, but probably the first episode. Yeah, but um, one of your favorite gaming yeah, game yeah, series yeah. is God of War, which yeah. hack and slash. Um, the newer ones probably dive into different genres, but you know, OG God of War, hack and slash. So um, yeah, no, we're uh, covering Bayonetta. Um, again, hack and slash game, very stylish, very sexy. <laughs> um, so yeah, to start us off, we're going to, uh, go into the combat, you know, a hack and slash game. That's why you're playing. You're playing for like the combat. You know, you're not yeah. necessarily there for the story. Hopefully there's a decent story and decent characters, but you're there for the combat. So, um, yep, what did you think of the combat? Um, I honestly, I, I really thought it was it was fun. It was fluid. It's everything you want in really a hack and slash game. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree. I had a lot of fun with the combat. Um, there's a lot of combos you can do. There's pretty good depth to it, like upgradability and just different, um, like, finishers, I guess you would say. Um, but, yeah, no. I had a lot of fun. I thought it was really good. Um, a lot of weapons. We didn't really unlock many weapons but there's yeah. a decent you know weapon variety yeah honestly selection. yeah i'm not sure how many there are really um but we unlocked two that we well three technically i guess yeah yeah that we really use which was like a uh, like a shotgun she she can have a shotgun which replaces her regular gun yeah, yeah she has a like melee weapon and a mm -hmm. ranged weapon yeah at all times so yeah we unlocked a shotgun uh, to switch out for the ranged weapon, we unlocked a katana, a whip, mm -hmm. which, again, we didn't really unlock many. We were um, really focused on just, like, getting through the game. Yeah. Um, but there was, yeah, there was a lot of stuff we were unlocking. Um, but you, when you unlock it, you have to buy it. Yeah. And, and we one, just didn't get and, to that point. Yeah, in one playthrough, we did not unlock, like, nearly, probably not even half. Not of, even half. No yeah. way. No way. Yeah. And, like, there was, like... Um, you have the weapons, you get accessories, which are expensive as fuck. Mm -hmm. um, and those, you know, just, you get certain bonuses. Like the one that we unlocked, you get, uh, you can clone yourself. Yeah. Like Shadow Jutsu or pretty whatever much. Yeah, you clone yourself. So it's pretty much, uh, I think it's like two or three clones. So for each hit you're doing, it's initially two or three hits. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what the other ones even did. Uh, I we think, read through a few yeah, of them, but I like none of them were like very appealing to yeah, us. There's different accessories that, again, this one was like a clone. There's like shields. There's healing. That's there's, right. Um, I think you can, there's like summons and stuff you can do too. Yeah, and most um, of them you deplete your magic gauge, which yeah. is honestly 
that kind of sucks because you want your magic gauge because that's how you do your like uh input finishers right right which is like pretty important especially if you're like in the nick of time trying to fucking survive mm-hmm. but they build up pretty quick it's not like yeah they do it as long as you're not hard to hit. come across if you get hit that's very detrimental to yeah. what's happening. Well, that was one of uh, my favorite parts about the game is uh, like a lot of hack and slash games, like the dodge mechanic can be clunky, but I thought this mm-hmm. one again was really fluid. Oh yeah. Yeah. The the whole dodge mechanic was awesome. And when you do like a perfectly timed dodge, you go into which time, which time. Yeah. You go into which time, which slows down uh, time for a few seconds and allows you to get like a good combo in. Yeah. Um, but also when you, uh, when you build up your magic gauge, it allows you to do like, it's probably called something else, but like a finisher, some of them, um, it allows you to summon, what are they called? Infernal beasts. Infernal beasts. Yeah. Which is, which pretty much makes like a creature out of her hair. It's like everything is like kind of based with her hair. Like her whole attire is her hair. Yeah, pretty much. Um, So yeah, there's like dragons you can summon, centipedes, uh, spiders. Uh, There's a lot. (laughs) There was, Um, yeah. That was a really cool aspect of the game. That's super cool. They're like shadowy, just like, because her hair's black. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a shadow figure. Right, right. But um, it's, it's super dope. I mean, those are, that's probably my like favorite part of the game is the Infernal Beasts. They're so fucking mm-hmm. sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's a good variety of them. Um, like each, um, like each level, there's like a new one added. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Like, oh, they, is it gonna be the dragon again? Oh no, they threw a spider at us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it gonna be the spider again? Oh no, there's a giant raven. Yeah, and they like get bigger <laughs> and bigger as you go through the Seriously, game. Seriously, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that last fight. <sighs> yeah, we'll get into that. Oh my that. gosh, yeah. I mean, you're talking like picture. Colossal Titan, mm-hmm. like 10, you know? 10 oh, no, not even. Oh, probably, yeah, probably more. Dude, it was, okay. Well, you were pretty much fighting, like, three Colossal Titans that last fight, and then this thing no, dude. was fucking massive. It's way bigger than that. All right, 100. 100 Colossal Titans. I mean, probably, because, <laughs> I mean, you have to, because the last fight, is you're in space. Yeah. And you fucking... You basically 10 times the last boss right? in that right. final form. Yeah. And, and you're the, this little dot. You're this little ant yeah. fighting this Cause, giant. Because, I, mean, I mean, think about this. When you're in the eye, you're literally in the eye of that thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're like the pupil. Pretty exactly. Much. Yeah. And this thing is like skyscraper towering over this boss you're fighting. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, again, we'll uh, yeah, we'll dive we'll back get into, into that, that a little bit but, um, later. Um, so yeah, combat. Combat is awesome. Uh, very what? stylish, very sexy. There's a lot of like sex appeal with like the combos and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we didn't even get to unlock any of the uh, other attires because apparently there's like a bunch of them, like costumes. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. So with that being said, a lot of replayability. Yeah, that's one thing Absolutely. I've always been into with games like. I'm not like a play to win kind of guy, but like, I mean, you don't even have to buy it with this game, but if you're telling me like I can unlock these costumes Mm -hmm. throughout doing these different challenges throughout the game, or even if it is purchasing, like that's where you get me. Yeah. Well, to bring it back, like God of War, this game is like synonymous with God of War, like OG God of War. Cause like, I agree with that. It gives you like the replayability. Like once you finish God of War, you want to go back through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's always something you missed. Exactly. There's always yeah. something you miss. Once you finish it, you unlock costumes, you unlock all this other shit, just like mm-hmm. in Bayonetta. So. Even more so. So I agree with what you said, but even more so, did you play uh, Devil May Cry at all? I played, I never finished those. Oh, Unfortunately, okay. that's a one I never got into. And I mean, that's regretful for me, but <laughs> <laughs> eventually I, like- I, I will get into it and play through them. I feel like it's even more parallel with like Devil May Cry. That's fair. Um, I don't know. Something about God of War, it was just not that this game is not that this game isn't dark, but I just, you know, God of War is more like dark and gritty. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, for sure. Um, well, I mean, fuck. 
Devil May Cry is dark too. It's literally demons and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. There's just something that I just feel like it was more parallel with Devil May Cry for me at least. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Anything else on combat? Yeah. Um. I actually have a question. Yeah. What yeah, did yeah. you hate about the combat? What did I hate about the combat? Um. I bet I bet I already know one thing. <laughs> What, what, what? So I'll confirm or deny. So we unlocked the katana, which is probably like the main weapon that oh, we used. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And when you're pressing uh, the fast attack in the air, she just fucking holds the katana up. Oh, she's just charging it. Yeah, and there's like no way to like... Like maybe interrupt there it. Is. I don't know. I haven't I don't, figured out a way to interrupt Yeah, because I, I would like I was like pressing the other buttons and the only way I could get out of it is if I dodge. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, hack and slash game, very fast paced. You don't just want to be frozen in yeah, the air. Yeah, because you just get just caught a sitting and then target. There yeah. goes your magic aids, and then it just kind of fucks you up for like the uh, next twenty seconds. Especially a boss fight. Oh my yeah. gosh. They just fucking grab you out of the air <laughs> <laughs> yeet you. Yeah. <laughs> So um, that's definitely a gripe that I have as well, though. Yeah. No, I agree with that. That was something I did not like. Um, I don't even know if this would be, like, under combat. I mean, you heard my frustration, but, like, some certain, some boss fights, there were some clunky areas where the combat was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? I mean, come on. I fell? What? You hit me? What? I dodged that? You know? Yeah. Um, But, no, I mean... Other than that, I really can't think of like a, a another real gripe I had. The combat was just really good, like that good and that fluid. It's just again, it's just so stylish and um, it has that platinum touch. Like again, if you've played a platinum touch, you know a, a platinum game, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like Near Automata, it's just I don't know. It's a master class of hack and slash games and. Again, Bayonetta is just the same. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking stoked to play the next two. Oh, yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can only get better, right? Hopefully. I sure hope so, because this one, uh, I'm guessing in Japan it released in 2009. Yeah. We got it in 2010. So, yeah, it released late, to like October. Yeah, October 2009. We got it January 2010. I think the second one came out in 2014. 15 um but either way like they've had you know they've had quite a few years to uh perfect it make another one um yeah uh, was there anything else you didn't like i'm trying to think honestly i don't really have that many no i mean again the combat was really good it's, it's very good very fluid so probably not i mean some of the enemies pissed me off like, you know, the fucking, the claw dudes, oh, the like claw. the blue yeah. one and the red one. Yes. Yep. Those things are fucking, God. Remember the one part where it's just wave after wave of those fuckers? Yeah. I yeah, know, I know you I do. Know which part you're referencing. <laughs> I yeah. Know. yeah. I remember watching bullshit. you and being like, oh, wow. Okay. There's a chest. There's probably health in there. Go get it. Yeah. It, it was <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, they're, know, they're, just, would... they're fast as fuck. And you can, like the dodging is very fluid in that game. Yeah. But you dodge and they're fucking on your ass. Oh, right? yeah, no, they attack like immediately. so fast. They attack so fast. And they can like interrupt you. Yep. To where you can't dodge. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, and mid combo. It's not like there's Exactly. No, they're going to get out of it. And there's two of them. <laughs> yep. At all times. Yeah. You're never just fighting one of them. There's yeah. always two, the red and blue. Yeah. Ooh, another cool combat um, part. The, the Pretty much every enemy, there's a, a f- couple that don't. But, like, almost every enemy drops a weapon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was an aspect that I liked. That was cool, yeah. So, they drop a weapon. You're able to equip it for a limited time because it will break. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, you know, that just adds more variety to, like, the different combos you can do because each one of those weapons has a combo of its own, Yeah, you know. So, yeah, that was cool. I forgot about that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Because rarely I would pick them up. It was mostly this giant sword that I know is going to be fucking slow, yeah. so I'm like, nah. Or when I you're can't fighting, yeah, the, uh, they're like manta rays or like stingrays, those oh, enemies, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you get the fucking chainsaw. Oh, for those. the chainsaw yeah. was dope. It was slow as fuck. It was slow, but that, but that when was you hit dope. something, it's like an immediate death. <sighs> yeah, that shit was sick. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of like the the claw guys, the blue and red ones. I wasn't yeah. a big fan of the claws, and you had, you can actually purchase those. Yeah, we and like yeah. the weapons thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we, we didn't, didn't purchase because, those. Yeah. But 
Yeah, we did unlock the option too. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I didn't like them, but I liked the challenge that they had. Yeah. Um, that came with them. Um, and then, um, you know, the, uh, on the normal enemies, when you get the, the magic gauge, mm -hmm. you know, like the, uh, it would, it would just do like, depending on where they're at, it would be like a different move that you would do to them. Yeah. Like, like say, execution. yeah, an execution, mm -hmm. like say you're behind one of the angels. Mm hmm. You like push them into a, a guillotine. Mm hmm. Like that shit's so dope. Yeah. Or like if you're in the air, you like chain them and you just fucking slaughter them. Mm hmm. Or bring some like saw down or something. Yeah. But yeah. No, there's a lot of cool little like executions, finishers. I think it also depended on like the enemy that, that you were it using did. it on. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because for a lot of the small enemies, you would kick them into like an Iron Maiden. Right. Just crush them you know the uh the ones that like resemble you like the witch mm -hmm. ones mm -hmm. <laughs> you fucking you like tie them up like some bdsm shit and you just like stretch their body mm -hmm. until they fucking explode uh, again that's like one of the things i really liked about the game because again it, it has a lot of sex appeal so mm -hmm. like i don't know that's just part of the style of bayonetta i guess yeah you know what what how fucking crazy is it that Nintendo owns this IP now? I know, yeah. And you can play as Bayonetta in Smash Bros. <laughs> That's just wild. It is wild. That's wild. Automatic rated infirmature. Yeah, like this game is like not a kid's game. Right. Like even like there's dialogue. I mean, j just the overall appeal is just like very sexual oriented. Mm -hmm. It's not like overly vulgar. Though. Not vulgar really. No, but I mean, no. there was like a couple instances where I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> this yeah. is like, yeah, there's sexual reference for sure. Yeah. And sexual themes, I guess. Yeah. Like, you, <laughs> like one of the last cutscenes. Mm -hmm. there's like a Luca, which is like the male character in the game. Like one of the main male characters. Mm -hmm. He's got like a thing for Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. But you're like flying in the ship or whatever was was it a ship? I can't remember. Either way, a helicopter. Helicopter. Helicop that's what it was. Yeah, helicopter. Yeah, you're like flying, <laughs> and she's like she's like wet. She's like dripping. Yep. Not like that, but <laughs> yeah, you get that just anyway. Yep. <laughs> there's like water, and it like goes over her tit and like lands on her nipple, and it just, just zooms in on him. It's like. <laughs> Total, total, like, awooga. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just, I mean, it, I, in my opinion, I thought it was cool because not many games, right. like, have that kind of nature. Yeah, yeah. But it was very, it wasn't, like, overly sexual. No. So, it, it was no. just, it was fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get Not, like, overly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Oh, maybe. I mean, shit. I think it definitely could. Um, it's not like overly fan service-y, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some fan service, but not overly fan service. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all that to say, the combat is really good. It's a hack and slash game, you know? That's what these games are about. Yeah. So you mentioned Luca. So let's go into characters. Okay. So obviously we have Bayonetta. Yep. Um, did you mention John? No, I didn't. Yeah, Jean is another one of the main characters who we find out is also an Umbra witch because that's what Bayonetta is. She's Actually, an Umbra witch. I don't think we really discussed like what Bayonetta is or. We're anything. gonna go into that. We're gonna yeah. go into that. I just want to talk about the characters real okay. quick. Um. So yeah, we have uh, Bayonetta. We have Jean. You mentioned Luca. Yep. So Luca is a journalist. He's a yeah. He's a journalist. Yes, he's a journalist. And he's just human. He's just like yeah, a he's just regular a normal dude. human, no witch, nothing. Yeah. You know, spiritual going on that with him. He's just a human. His father was also a journalist, so he's just kind of following in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. So you got Luca, Bayonetta, Jean, Luca. We have Enzo, who is just easily the worst fucking yeah, character, useless character. <laughs> What's uh, funny? We'll get into the characters we like, what we don't like, but yeah, Enzo is pointless yeah. maybe in like bayonetta 2 and 3 he'll play <laughs> maybe a bigger role but like yeah. pointless character like um, what was the he's just like a lackey yeah literally yeah we can go into that later but <laughs> um radon yep yeah radon who's very cliche mm -hmm. but like better than enzo that's for absolutely sure. yeah um, um cereza 
Cereza. Yep, yep. Which is just a little girl, mm-hmm. little girl, black hair. Um, I'm trying to think. Looks very similar to Bayonetta. Um, <laughs> yeah, very. Um, Balder, I guess. Yes, he's introduced uh, in the end. But yeah, yeah. you got Balder. Is there really any uh, other Jubileus? Yeah, I mean, yeah, technically. And you have all the tiers of like angels that you fight, a yeah. lot of them being bosses. And all the bosses, I mean, I can um, not fucking remember their names. <laughs> but great. honestly, no, I think that's all the main characters. Yeah, there's not really too much going on as, as yeah. far as that, which is cool. I will say um, one of my main gripes. So when it comes to games... The things I appreciate the most are pretty much what we're covering here. Combat, character development, character development, and story. Like, that's what I want in the game. Mm-hmm. I want it to have, like, really fluid, just good combat. Makes me want to come back to the game. I like when there's depth with the characters. And, obviously, we all like a good story. Yeah. But, with this game, some characters have some depth. But I feel like a majority of them miss the mark. I don't think I don't think a lot of the characters had depth. No, I agree for sure. I mean, even Bayonetta, the main character, like, there's not too much going on there. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, I definitely agree because she's like pretty much has the exact same attitude throughout the whole game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's not like, well, I mean, yes, but there there are like some like instances, like a little bit of comedy, yeah, a little bit of romance, a little bit of yeah that. But overall, though, there's not like. It's not very complex. Yeah. No, not at all. I mean, I don't want too complex. Exactly. Know? Like I mean, a lot yeah. of it will go right over my head. Um, but yeah, no, there's not a lot of depth there. One thing that I really did like about her was um, like she's very nonchalant throughout the whole game. Yeah. She's just very like calm, collected. Like, hey, there's this, you know, 100 foot angel or demon right in front of me. You know, everyone's running away. She's just very, like, calm. She's yeah. like, I don't give a fuck. Let's play. Let's dance. You know? Which, at the beginning of the game, you're kind of like, holy fuck. Like, she's, like, very tame. And then you kind of learn, like, she's been doing the shit for a while. Oh, yeah. She's, and she's like, ass. basically the most powerful entity mm-hmm. in the universe I for the s- most part. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I will say, with the death aside like she is a badass character. oh absolutely like she is fucking awesome like she is <laughs> she is a goddess <laughs> yes yes she is <laughs> oh, no. oh no. <laughs> no, i'm kidding uh, oh shit so yeah no she's badass um, um aesthetic wise like ooh, she yeah. looks awesome yeah super cool um yeah and, like again her whole outfit is just made of her hair like yeah. um you know almost resembling like peacock elements you know things just like hanging off here hanging off mm-hmm. there she's got the guns holstered to her feet you know she's got her two sidearms yeah imagine um, long like full hair. leather kind of yeah, like pretty, a yeah. gimp suit mm-hmm. nearly <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah no aesthetic on her is really cool jean is Cool, but not as cool. Okay. Definitely not even close. Um, again, for an Umbra witch, she doesn't give, like, witch vibes yeah. like Bayonetta obviously does. Um, Radon, again, he's pretty cliche. Yeah. He has, like, the tattoos going along. He here. looks like, all right. Bald, crazy. When I first seen him, I was like, this is literally demon Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> you did say that. I remember you saying that. Like, red leather. Yeah. 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 You know, he has a <laughs> glasses. He wears fucking sunglasses at all times. I'm sure as you hear us saying this, talking about Rodan, you're probably picturing like, oh, I could probably picture what this guy sounds like. Yeah. I can imagine what Super this guy sounds fucking like. He deep sounds voice. exactly how you were yeah. imagining. I promise you. Not like kind, Mike Tyson, though. <laughs> kind of like, um, <laughs> shoot, what's that guy's name? Oh, man. I'm going to get some hate for this. Machine gun arm. Barrett? Barrett, yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Not yeah. the attitude. Definitely not the attitude, but like that voice. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um. So, yeah, no. Aesthetic for Radon. Pretty cliche. Bayonetta. Mm, chef kiss. Yep. Chef kiss. But uh, Enzo, he's pretty much penguin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good comparison. Yeah, yeah, and again, he's garbage. 
Um, Cereza, like again, boss. looks like a, a young Bayonetta. Wink. Um, well, we can go into oh. John's character development. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, had the most character death. development in the whole game. Pretty much. The whole, like, uh, Vegeta. Yeah. Vegeta character development. The Vegeta yeah. arc. Because at first I was just like, is she on our side or right. is she not? Yeah. Because she, you know, you just kind of come across her at some point. And then she, she's like fighting alongside you mm-hmm. near the beginning. Pretty much, yeah, in the very beginning. They, uh, yeah, they don't really hold your hand when it comes to the story. You kind of have to piece things together. Yeah. So, yeah, in the very beginning, you're like fighting alongside her, fighting demons or angels. And then it kind of, you know, skips a little bit. And then she's introduced again and y'all are enemies. Yeah, and um, you're fighting her. Like right. you fight her probably like four or five times yeah, throughout the four game. four or five times. So yeah, it's like she's bad, then she's good. There's ulterior motive yeah. for her being bad, you know. And the, the dialogue is just like, it's fucking like over my head. <laughs> I'm just like... What the fuck is going Again, on? I think they're just trying to be like, witty yeah. But I think clever. that's the point. I think yeah, the point just a bunch is to of be confusing, and yeah. then towards the end, it kind of ties together. Mm-hmm. And which is fair. You, you kind of learn that um, towards the end, she is actually your ally, yeah. but she's trying to stop you from what you're trying to, do, or what she thinks that you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and again, we'll kind of go more yeah, into yeah. that when we get into the story. But yeah, no, Jean, she, she had a little bit of depth there. Yeah. Um, did I like her character? I mean, not really, but. Yeah, same. <laughs> better than Radon, better than Enzo. Right. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, she was a main character. I would not say that Radon or Enzo were main characters by nah, any means. No, no, no. It was uh, definitely Luca, Jean, yeah. I guess Cereza, and uh, Bandit. Mm-hmm. That's um, true. Balder, I'm going to him a little bit. I mean, again, he's introduced in the end. Yeah. So it, it's not really fair to say, like, oh, why wasn't there a lot of depth to his character? Because he was literally introduced in the end. Yeah, so Balder um, is um, Bayonetta's father. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure if we were going into that yet. Well, we don't have to discuss it too much, but that's who he uh, is. Yes. And yes. that's... Honestly, you don't learn, like, too much about him. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, you yeah. like you just said, you have to piece things together. Mm-hmm. Like once you get to the end of the game, yes. you kind of figure things. He's out. kind of like the um, again. He's introduced in the end, but he's kind of like the puppet master pulling yeah. the strings, you know, throughout the entire game. Yeah. So like after finishing it, if we like were to play through it again, we'd probably be like, oh, that's him. Oh, this is what he's referencing, or that's what this boss was referencing. You know, there's yeah. a lot of that. What was he, a Lumen Sage? Yeah, he was a Lumen Sage. Yeah, so... So he was the last, last Lumen, Lumen sage. sage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah pretty, pretty much, much evil dude. Yeah. 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 Bad guy. Bad guy. Bad daddy. Bad daddy, again, kind of a cliche motive, like, hey, mm-hmm. let's create a new universe that's <laughs> truly balanced. He's literally fucking Thanos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think we kind of went into like what we like, what we don't like. Um, what did you not like about, maybe you went into it. What did you not like about Bayonetta's character? Um, she's female. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, that's a loaded question. I mean, it could be nothing. I mean, maybe she's perfect. I mean, overall, I really liked her character because I, I would say there's not a lot of video games where there's a character like her. Right, right. Um, maybe those are just games I haven't played. I mean, we do need more female protagonist games. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's actually quite a bit out now. Yeah, there's yeah. that this game is released, but yeah. it's been like fucking thirteen years, yeah. right? Pretty much, yep. Yeah. So I'd say uh, the uh, last like five to ten years we've had a lot more female protagonists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm here for it. Same. But I mean, yeah, overall I think she's really cool. Like I said, she's like 
there's not like too much going on with her character. From but, one to ten, how do you rate her? Not on aesthetic, but just in general. Right, right. <laughs> well, I, I, in total, I'd probably give a seven and a half. Okay, I was thinking that, or maybe like eight. Yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, like, I, I did fun like character. Yeah, I did like the the comedic bits. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of humor with her character. Mm-hmm. Definitely, like you know, stylish. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the like action shots where she's just posing and shit. Oh yeah, no, you'll have like a random combo, and then at the end, she's just like has her ass out, and it's like a little snapshot. <laughs> yeah. Again, the game has a lot of like st- that. When I say style, like that's kind of what I'm referring to. It has mm-hmm. a lot of style, style, sex appeal. Like I don't know, it's just that's what I like about it. It has a lot of character. Yeah, a lot of sexy charm. Um, so yeah, Bayonetta, I'd give a solid eight. Jean, I'm thinking you're getting a five. <laughs> I'm gonna Rodan, say four. <laughs> um, no, well, Rodan's a four. Enzo, you're a. You're a three, negative three. I don't even know who the fuck Enzo is. <laughs> He's the lackey from the beginning. He was in the game for like two minutes. What do you mean? You don't, just kidding. Literally, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they but, probably paid the voice actor for Enzo like 50 bucks. Probably. Kind of on the street. I'm oh, walking crap. in. I'm walking in. Literally. Typical, typical. New Yorker. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. There's some good characters. There's some decent characters. There's some there's some bad characters. And but there's not a lot of characters. There's not yeah, I was gonna say there's really not a lot of characters. Um again, you know, this is just the first bayonetta. Mm-hmm. So we still have two and three, so you know, there's a lot to build on. Yeah. So story. Oh god. Yeah. So we're going to do our best. It's kind of, it gets complicated and some things you would really have to like either like watch videos on it or like play through the game Mm -hmm. a few times to really grasp the story. Cause there's like some time travel elements to it. There's like, um, I don't know. There's, it, it it just gets pretty complex, pretty complicated. Yeah. Maybe some plot holes in there too, but I guess that's arguable. Um, so yeah, hit How, us, hit us with the story. What's the gist? <laughs> you're, you're asking the wrong motherfucker right here, bro. Do your best. Do your best. Just do your best. So not the, that I like am an expert, but I'll chime in or correct if I happen to know. Yes. <laughs> so the story is, it's like a evangelical type, like, like you know, heaven, hell, mm-hmm. and then you have, what was it called? Um, the in between like chaos, but. What do they call it? Purgatorio or oh, something? Oh, yeah. Purgatorio? That's yeah. it. <laughs> like purgatory. But Purgatorio. Not yeah. really. So, yeah, you Strange. have um, Paradiso, which is heaven. Yeah. Inferno, hell. You have, like, the real world. Mm-hmm. And then Purgatorio. Yeah, and basically, you know, you play as Bayonetta, who is a Umbra witch. And then mm-hmm. Jean is the other Umbra witch. Mm-hmm. Which you find out is your ally towards the end, but right. um, and then the Lumen Sage is They're Alder, like, which is her dad, and yeah, so yeah, yeah like, those are the two clans mm-hmm. that uh, that's yeah, though it, it was a little confusing. <laughs> All right, let me let me do my best here. <laughs> so yes, you have the Umber Witches, you have the Lumen Sages, and they each have what's called the Eyes of the World. Mm-hmm. So the Umber Witches have the less left eye, the Lumen Sages have the right eye. Yeah. And it's pretty much just like a balance of power. Like they they live in harmony just because they respect that balance. Yeah. And there was a dispute that ended in a war. And it ended that the uh the result of that war was the Umber Witches kind of winning, taking over. But for fear of the Umbra witches, they sent out witch hunts. So there's not many Umbra witches left. The Lumen Sages, what we thought, they were all kind of, you know, extinguished. You know, they all died out. Yeah. Pick it back up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a yeah, solid explanation. Uh, well, that's kind of like what you're given in the first hour. 
Yeah. 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 So like the first hour or two, that's what they like throw at you. And throughout the games, you get little bits more to kind of piece together. Yeah. So how the game starts out, I guess you're, you, you basically, you wake up from a 20 year or, or a 500 year, um, you've been put to sleep for 500 years, right? And you've only been awoken yeah. for 20 years. Yeah, you've been, I think she's been like sealed, which yes. again, we find this out later, but she's been sealed yeah. for 500 years. But we learn early that she's only been awake for 20 years. And she, in that 500 sl- year slumber, she's forgotten like basically all her memory from the, yeah, th- as yep. a result. Yeah. So all she remembers is just, she remembers she's an umber witch mm-hmm. in just those 20 years. Yeah. And I think she is supposed to kill a certain amount of angels yeah. like every day. Or she gets damned. Yeah, damned to hell, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Which, which I'm not exactly sure how that would work now that we've beat the game. Like, who the fuck is, How? The, how what are they going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know. Again, maybe we get into that with, like, Bayonetta 2 and 3. Yeah, we go more uh, into, maybe. like, the Inferno. Like... So in this game, you actually, so most of the game takes place in like the real world and Purgatorio. Mm -hmm. Um, You go into Paradiso a little bit, but I don't think we, we go into Inferno at all. No, I don't don't think so, no. Yeah, which again is like the equivalent to hell. Right. So like when you fight the bosses and you kill the bosses, you see these arms from hell bringing them. So there's more going on here. That's not like, you know in the game that's discussed in the game. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess we should point out that once the eyes of the world are connected, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So the whole, the whole, the whole plot of the game is the eyes of the world. Yes. Being reconnected. Right. Once they are, there's a thing, a being an entity called Jubileus Mm -hmm. and they're known as the creator like God for the yeah. most part. Yes. And once that's created, um, I guess Balder at the end is he, he, he just wants the universe to be reckoned. Mm-hmm. Right. He wants to create his own yeah. universe. So that's like his goal and like the angels goal. He, he almost like works hand in hand with them. Yeah. So, yeah. So again, the Umber witches have the left eye of the world. The Lumen sages have the right eye. Uh, you know, there was the war. They were all just kind of killed off. There's just these umber witches left. We thought all the Lumen Sages were gone. We find out there's one more, the last Lumen Sage, which is Baldur. Like you said, Bayonetta's father. He's trying, he's working hand in hand with the angels to get the left eye to um, resurrect, like you said, Jubileus, the creator, to create a universe of harmony. Like it was before the war, the war, right? Yeah. So he's trying to um, reunify the three realities, which are light, dark, and chaos, mm-hmm. to create you know, a uh, universe in harmony. What you're saying? He he's doing that to create a universe in harmony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was the angel's goal is to reunify the realities and to create. It's not like they were just like. Fuck this universe. I'm going to destroy it. Which, I, I mean, I guess they were, but they were trying to resurrect Jubileus to, right. re, you know, like recreate the universe. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess you we know, can go bring on. back that balance. Right. I guess we can go into like uh, what Jean's purpose was fighting Bayonetta. Yes. So the reason that you're fighting her this whole time is, uh, well, I should start out by saying, so Jean stabs you 500 years ago mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to put you in a slumber so that you are not um, giving oh, me. yourself over to Balder because right. you are the left right. eye. Bayonetta is the left eye of the world. Yes. And Balder is the right. So and yeah, you, you find out in the beginning you're, she's after a jewel, mm-hmm. which she believes to be the left eye of the world. And she's thinking that if she finds this jewel, it's going to like trigger some memories. She's trying. She's just trying to find out more about her past. And so yeah. that's like her like 
end game. Like that's her goal throughout the entire game. And she finds out that she is actually the left eye. Yeah. It's, it wasn't just like some jewel. It was, it was her. Um, and I guess we can go more into her character. So like you were saying, John, she is like the next heir. She, yeah. yeah she 500 the years, the next heir for the Umber witches. So in tradition, she has to spar with someone. She chooses Bayonetta, who is the like outcast, mm-hmm. the impure child. Because Bayonetta is the like love child of, um, the uh, it was a male for Boulder for the Lumen Sages and a female of the Umber Witch, which was against the law. Like yeah. that was like outcast. So she uh, was kind of given to the Umber Witches just for them to watch over. So Jean wanted to spar with her to then seal her. Yeah. So the Lumen Sages couldn't then get the left eye, which is her, to kind of, you know, Calamity. create this, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah, to prevent that creation of the universe. Right. Recreation. Yeah. <laughs> Again, bear with us. It's kind of, it's pretty yeah. difficult. We're doing our best here. <laughs> Honestly, I'm learning from Chris as we're fucking talking <laughs> about this because there's, there's just. I just hope I'm not saying anything incorrectly. I, I, I'm pretty sure I got a somewhat solid grasp Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I, no, I think so. Because <clears throat> you're sparking, you know, some memory from playing it. Yeah. Some aspects yeah. that I'm, I'm like, forgetting. Because mm-hmm. we, mm-hmm. we played this game over pretty much, like, a week, right? Maybe a week and a half. Yeah, maybe a week and a half, two weeks, um, yeah. So, and also, it's taken a lot to play through this game right now because God of War, Ragnarok is out. <laughs> Did you even play it at all today? Fuck no, dude. <laughs> See, that's the thing. We're sacrificing. I was busy making a God thumbnail for this shit. <laughs> the sacrifice. <laughs> it's definitely a sacrifice, yeah. Um, but um, where were we uh, as far as the story? Um, we were talking about Bayonetta. Oh, yeah. So she she's in a slumber. A Jean puts her to sleep for 500 years. So that yes. apparently before um, Bayonetta was like a different person. She had like a different personality. She was like practically on the sages side i believe from what i've gathered because she was like trying to give herself to the sages so she puts her into a slumber and then when she awakens with no memory i think she's just like i think it was like more so i don't know if she was trying i think it was more so the fear of like what if she gets in the hands of the sages right let me seal you away just in case maybe but like in some of the dialogue towards the uh the ass end of the game Jean's like talking to her and she's like, you're different now, you know, did you pick up on that? Well, I think that was because, you know, we're, we're kind of getting into something different, but we, um, well, I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself, but remember she goes, she like changes the timeline, Mm -hmm. like what she does in the past, like now affects like the present. So I think that's why she was referencing you're different now. Maybe I don't know. This fucking story is so confusing. <laughs> you could be right because the the whole time shit that really fucked with me. I was like, "What is going on?" All right, so I've been kind of winking at it, but you know, we we reference Cereza, who looks a lot like Bayonetta. Yeah, uh, Bayonetta just kind of comes across her, and um, you know, kind of starts to take a liking to the little girl. So she starts to protect her, mm-hmm. and in the end. You find out, you know, she's always referencing daddy, daddy this, mommy, mommy. She thinks Bayonetta is her mom. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, daddy brought me here. Daddy, daddy, don't you hear him? So she ends up running to, that's when we meet Balder. She yeah. runs up to Balder. And um, we find out that Cereza is actually Bayonetta, but as a girl. Yeah. And Balder now has the, you know, because he is the last sage. So he has like the right eye of the world. So they didn't really explain it that well, but I'm guessing that allows you to kind of he's got I some, say like time travel, but like yeah. he was able to go in the past and get Cereza as a kid. He's literally fucking Palkia, dude. Wait, which one which one's Time? <laughs> yeah. Time, which one's time is Diablo, is that Diablo? right? It could and be space is Palkia. Yeah, I think you're right? right. Yeah, I think you're right. I really don't know. You're the expert there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not a big Diamond and Pearl fan. But, yeah. Anyway, Pokemon reference for the episode. <laughs> so, 
Hmm. But yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, Sariza gets put to sleep. Like after it's after the fight with Balder, right? Yes. Yes. That. So you think Cereza, you've defeated? Yeah, you think you've defeated him? Think you've defeated Balder? Are we skipping anything? I want to make sure we're not skipping anything. Oh, we're absolutely skipping. Okay. Well, maybe we go can back we to can it. go back to the middle. Okay. Ish. So yes. Um. So yeah. One of the last fights you fight Balder, your father. You beat his ass. Really great boss fight. Super cool. Um. So yeah. So again, Balder had the right eye. Bayonetta is the left eye. So Balder was able to go back in time and get Cereza. So that just makes Bayonetta able to go, you know, back in time and, you know, put Cereza where she was in the in the right timeline. Yeah. But throughout the game, she's like, you know, filling Cereza's head with things. So like we find out that Cereza now has the um a locket like yeah, her the mother locket, gave her? like the watch or something. It's like a yeah, some type of yeah, locket. And she's like, you know, keep this close to your heart. So when she puts her back in time, Cereza now is filled with all that information that Bayonetta has been giving her throughout the time that she's been out of her timeline. Mm-hmm. So now that changes the timeline. It's, it's really confusing. It changes that the now present. changes the present because where Jean went to seal her and stab her in her heart, she now had that yeah. locket that she, you know, so it kind held, of avoids it. held close to her tight. Yeah. Well, Held close so to her So it did heart. not seal her. So it didn't seal her. So that changes everything. That's why Bayonetta was boosted with all that power because she was no longer sealed for 500 yeah. years. So in return, since um, Jean wasn't able to seal Bayonetta, that gave Balder the ability to grab Bayonetta as, you know, mm-hmm. the eye. Mm-hmm. He had hold of the eye. And it's crazy because that's what Balder wanted the entire time. Yeah, like he perfectly set it up yeah. to where... Because um, he wanted... He wasn't really after, like, Bayonetta. He was after Cereza because yeah. of, like, just her innocence. Mm-hmm. I guess that was just, like, the perfect balance. Yeah. So since... Bayonetta put her, altered her timeline and made her kind of grow up with that innocence. It then made Bayonetta like that. Yeah. You know, it was a different Bayonetta. So that's why I was referencing maybe that's when Jean was like, you're different now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That makes sense. That so makes that's, a lot of sense. That's when um, Balder then takes Bayonetta and now has the left and right eye. You find out this whole capital giant skyscraper ship that you're kind of fucking fighting your way up to the top before you fight Balder is a rocket ship. I know. I know this sounds crazy, but like it's it's pretty like well done. But it's a rocket ship. You then go you then go into space and that's when he um resurrects Jubileus. Yeah. Which is a fucking sick ass fight. That was a really good fight. So this whole time like Bayonetta and Balder and are in like the pupils of like the statue going up. The statue, which later becomes Jubileus, goes up into space, and then Jean is like on a motorcycle, fucking like driving up the spaceship and like jumping on rock to rock and like dodging all these enemies and killing all these enemies, <laughs> and then awakens like Bayonetta, but. It's too late because Jubileus is then resurrected, and that's the final boss fight between Bayonetta and Jubileus. Yeah, yeah. You Which know what that kind of reminded me of? very good, like, climax. What? So you're, like, basically going to space in a rocket statue? Mm-hmm. You ever seen Austin Powers? Ah, uh, long time ago. It's been a while. <laughs> Do you remember, like, the, uh, the Pizza Boy or whatever, or it's the burger statue, and it's, like, getting launched into space? Mm-mm. Fuck, never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, those are some movies I got to go back through. It's oh, been so, so long. I love Austin Powers. But, um, yeah, that fight, <clears throat> so fucking good. Because you're battling God, essentially. Yeah. And, again, that's the fight we were referencing where, like, you know, we had mentioned the infernal beast that she's able to summon. Well, this last one she summons to pretty much finish Jubileus off is just this just gigantic like queen i forgot her name i don't know if it's shiva or not but yeah it's something queen, like that and she's just god falcon yeah. punch how can i even how can we describe the fucking scale of this because jubileus was like i would say maybe like us 
just normal, you know, normal height, normal human being Jubileus, maybe next to a skyscraper or something. No, yeah. no, that I feel like that'd be too big. That would be too big. So imagine us next to a skyscraper, and that would be Jubileus. Jubileus being the skyscraper. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's and fair. then imagine twenty of those maybe being the uh, the last infernal beast, mm-hmm. the witch that yeah. Bayonetta kind of c- controls, mm-hmm. and just with one last punch. It's, it's really cool because the last segment, I mean, this queen is just punching Jubileus. And the last segment is you playing as like Jubileus's corpse. Mm-hmm. And you're just trying to dodge these planets because you see the yeah. sun in the background. And, yeah. and it lets you know like, hey, you're trying to make it yeah, to the so sun. You're, you're literally flying through the Milky Way. Yes, and you're just like <laughs> playing as this corpse trying to dodge, you know, debris and meteors and planets. And you make it to the sun and you see her like corpse just burning and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there's a little segment where, you know, there's still debris of the statue now coming, plummeting to Earth. So you and John are working on destroying it so it doesn't destroy Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, no, that's pretty much the end of the game. There's a funeral because they believe that Bayonetta had died. Yeah. Um, but she didn't. She's alive. And that's the second time she has two more Enzo. games to make. Luckily. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... You get literally like two minutes of Enzo. Oh yeah, they yeah. Then Enzo comes back, Rodan comes back, and uh, Luke is there. Yeah, all the characters we did discuss the mm-hmm. five, six characters. You know, they're all there for that scene. So, yeah, Enzo now gets three minutes of screen time. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, the the ending of the game is like very similar to the beginning of the game, which I thought was cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you, like you start, funerals. well, we had mentioned that in the very beginning, you start fighting these angels with Jean, mm-hmm. but then it skips some time and actually goes, I feel like that's more of like a, like intro, like an introduction, yeah. like yeah, a yeah, tutorial, yeah. like it's just getting you used to the combat and then it goes to a like cemetery, like you're right. That's um, like the beginning. Yeah. 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 And again, in the end, that's where it ends. At the cemetery, they think you died. Blah, blah, blah. Kill some mm-hmm. more angels. Um, so I'm trying to think. What were some things that we may have missed or passed over? Because um, we went through the combat. Good I combat. Guess. Characters. Story. What the fuck was Luca's purpose? Was he there just to kind of carry Ceriza, like through the game? Did they need like another character? to like off put her to follow her through the game. Like, was that the purpose of Luca? Cause he really had no purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe like a, maybe some type maybe of romance. Some type of romance. Yeah. yeah. Some type of romance. Um, Cause nothing really happened. Maybe just add something else to kind of, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to pull on your heartstrings a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe it was helped to push like how Bayonetta may be this like terrible person. Oh, that's, well, that's right. That's something we yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. skipped over. So, because he thinks Luca thinks that Bayonetta kills his dad when he's a kid. Yes, because he's his dad was a journalist as well, as well and he was trying to figure out. Um, because as a human, they were um him as a researcher was trying to figure out what it was. He knew there was this like alter, alternate dimension or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. He knew that you know they're heaven and hell and trying to figure out. <clears throat> the lore between the Umbra and the Lumen Mm -hmm. and some shit like that. Right. Well, so his dad, um, Luca's dad, who was also a journalist, he was the one who discovered Bayonetta at the bottom of the lake in the coffin. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And what Luca sees, he just sees his dad like being ripped apart. Yeah. And I think he sees like a little hint of like Bayonetta. So he's thinking this entire time, like, Bayonetta killed my father. Bayonetta mm-hmm. killed my father. Yeah, because humans can't see the angels and shit. Yeah. Because it's, like I, like I said, it's kind of like a... Um, well, because they're in Purgatorio. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, they're, like, kind of doing this fighting in Purgatorio, but you can... I feel like there's kind of still something you're able to see, like little remnants yeah. of the Imagine, fight. like, a, a fourth dimension, maybe. 
Yeah. You, you can't see anything, but you know something's happening. Like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, no, he witnesses that in this entire time. I guess he, like, obsesses with this case because the whole thing that you were referencing with, like, uh, the Umber Witches, the Lumen Sages, that was the case that his dad was obsessed with because, again, he's a journalist. His father's yeah. a journalist. So I guess he had a lot of information on it, and then when Luca grew up, he decided he wanted to be a journalist and kind of take on this same case mm -hmm. and, you know, find out who his father's killer was. Right. Which you later find out that it was not Bayonetta and it was uh, Balder. Yep. Balder the whole time. And Balder, they kind of not really tug on your heartstrings because nobody really gives a fuck about Luca, but they... <laughs> they could have, but yeah. it just wasn't, I yeah. don't know. There was like it, a, it wasn't told well enough. Like the delivery wasn't there to where I'm like, oh, Boulder, yeah, your yeah father. they don't they don't make you care I mean, about Luca, Luca enough. Yeah, because all we knew about Luca was that his dad died. He was a journalist. Luca becomes a journalist because his dad died, so that he could figure out what the fuck happened, and that he's voice acted by the same guy that does Sasuke. Now, did you That's fact check all that? We, did you fact check that? All right, so I did in fact check that, but when you've seen as much Naruto as I have, you hear that <laughs> voice, you just know. I did not, okay, but I'm willing to put some money. That so you didn't watch the sub? Fucking pleb? No, I did not. Well, <laughs> some of it I did. Some of it, some of it I did because, like, you know, when you try to watch it online, you're not really, most of the time you're not going to find the dub. It's just going to be the sub that you find on those random yeah. websites or Crunchyroll or whatever it is. Chris is pirating way. Naruto. Ah! <laughs> it is not a victimless crime. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, at the end, um, Luca, um, he's like, he, <laughs> dude, I don't know how the fuck this guy is getting everywhere. But he just like ends up wherever fucking Bayonetta is. It is somehow. that is really true. I he's got like some kind of like zip line. Yeah. Fucking what is that yeah. called? Like I would say uh, what the fuck is that thing called? Where you shoot it and it brings you. To yeah. Rich. I don't. I can't remember what it's called. Let's uh, just it's say it's not me. zip line, but let's just call it zip line. I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah. But yeah, he he just like gets everywhere, which uh, that's a little bit unrealistic. But who gives a fuck? It's about witches and well, demons I, and <laughs> angels, whatever. Bayonetta two, Bayonetta three actually just came out. Bayonetta, Bayonetta two has been out for a while. I would love if they kind of dive into that a little bit. Like, yeah. there's more to Luca. Like, how did cool. he just always, just coincidentally, be there, be in the right spot, right? Survive all the crazy encounters <laughs> and stuff that happened. He's been like thrown off an aircraft, literally thrown out of a skyscraper. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I think Bayonetta played a part in keeping him alive. But right. still, like, there's some things where you're like, how? What? Yeah. Didn't make too much sense. But, I mean, who gives a fuck? It's not that big of a deal. But, um, yeah, Balder, at the end, he pretty much has him. He has the angels grab him like they did his father. And they're about to rip him apart. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Bayonetta saves him. And then Baldur's like, fuck no. And grabs him with like his sage power and throws him out the fucking window. And you think he's dead. Because mm -hmm. uh, Bayonetta goes to save him and she doesn't catch him. Right. And then later you find out that she summons a fucking rocket. And again, again he, there's, he, there's he survives some, on it. He's like hanging on. There's some arguable plot holes yeah. in this game. Which we won't is fine. get into that, which is fine, you know. It's just a game. Like, I don't expect them the to entirety like, of this cover fictional. every little, yeah, nook and cranny. Like, yeah, yeah there's going to be some plot holes. And again, it's not super deep. So when you don't have that mm -hmm. um, Game of Thrones death, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you have plot holes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the combat character story. Our kind of uh, dig through uh, of Bayonetta. If you were to... Rate this game one to ten. How would you review it? Um, let's see. Taking I, everything we've discussed, yeah, you know, everything into consideration, our gripes. Like, I, you, I feel like you can't just be like, "I had a lot of fun." It's a ten, you know. Like, no, let's just be a little definitely bit more not a ten. A ten, a perfect game. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Not even close. But even just off the fun factor, it's not a 10. Right. But I'm just saying, like, you know, try to keep the, uh, like, the categories in mind. Yeah. So. Oh, also, uh, before that, um, so I'm no music expert, but, like, the music in this game oh, yeah. is phenomenal. It's really like, good. Like, I wouldn't know how to, like, describe the genre or subgenres in, like, the. Well, there's a bunch of the different, different things, yeah, but, like. A bunch of different There's music. a good variety, uh, but, like, the music is is really good. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed the music. Actually, what if we did? Um, all right, combat. How do you how do you grade the combat? One to ten. Okay. What's your score? Just on combat. Let's do that. I'd give it a nine. I'd give it a nine. I'm thinking there's like very little that was like shitty yeah, about it, so yeah. I'd give it a nine. I'm thinking eight point five. I think That's I fair. would give it a nine. I'm gonna take one off just because. And I'm sure they correct this in two and three, but there are some good combos, but you find yourself doing a lot of the same combos. Well, you have to put in perspective that we didn't unlock everything. We did. There was a lot that we didn't even unlock. But we definitely tried a lot. And they're just like, I don't know. We didn't buy them because they were like, "Eh, okay, that was okay. That is true. But there was still shit that, that was listed that was like yeah. not even unlocked. It's it's probably that we not couldn't even fair because it's not like I we we bought and we didn't thing. get all the weapons, you know. Yeah. Okay. But to say fair. that with what you did with play, what as, we did play, I'm gonna still give it an eight point five. Okay, that's but fair. that's good. That's a good. Yeah, I'd good give it a nine. Yeah, for a hack and slash game. Yeah. Usually okay. there's not a lot going on. Yeah. So, especially a fucking thirteen year old game, you know. Yeah. No. At, it, and it at the time. That was probably like one of the best games in terms of combat. Yeah, I would so. like. Man, we should have uh, seen what like IGN or Game Informer had reviewed this game. I guarantee yeah. it was it was probably like a nine. It was like an eight or nine. Again, I would hope the so. time, like it yeah. was like it's. I think it aged well. Like it's a good game, oh, but yeah. at the time, it was probably like, whoa, this is groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So combat, you give it a nine. I give it an eight point five. Give it a nine, um. Yeah. Can we grade characters? Yeah, I guess score the characters. What do you think? Each of them? No, no, no. Just in general. Oh, um. Okay, maybe seven. Maybe maybe yeah. I guess six and a half. Yeah, I was gonna say if that's a seven, that's pretty much all. I, I like Bayonetta, on Bayonetta. And Balder was cool. Really reminiscent of like Pegasus from Yu-Gi-Oh. He had like the same kind of tone of voice. He had, he even had like the mask and a the lot monocule. Of that is like, yeah, aesthetic, so which was cool. But yeah, yeah, his aesthetic was really cool. Um, a lot more. It was just very different than mm-hmm. anything you really see. Kind of looked like a Final Fantasy boss almost. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, but he was yeah he was he was cool. He was a cool character. Um, Jean, I did not like Jean. Yeah, just well her her aesthetic I didn't like. Um, as a character, I wasn't like. Like her personality, it wasn't too mm-hmm. keen of. Um, but again, as in, yeah. as a whole, but as a whole, like six and a half. Luca was trash, Enzo okay. was trash. Um, yeah, I didn't hate Radon, but he wasn't like anything special. Yeah, so. no, he's pretty generic. For not a lot of characters, Bayonetta carried that definitely. And I'm gonna say, since. Bayonetta was just such a badass character. I'm I'm, I'm gonna give it a seven, solid seven. Okay. But again, that is not strictly, but almost strictly Bayonetta. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Yeah, like if this was like if all the characters were like at that same Bayonetta tier, it would have been like a nine, nine point five. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So characters six point five seven. Story. What do you give the story? <sighs> You know, after we've discussed it a bit, it's kind of, you know, you know we're, we're it's filled in. It together a yeah, it's bit, filled in. And know? I'm sure there's shit that I, I'm still confused about. Right, right. Um, which is okay. Um, I'm sure once we play the next two games, it'll be a lot more involved. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Because as a, um, a game getting into... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the scene, yeah, you know, they kind of got to start out strong. And that's probably why there are more games made just because it's a pretty good story. I mean, I think the story's good. I thought it was very like unique, you know, the fucking angels, demons, right. Right. 
and it's kind of like flipped, you know, like yeah, the angels are are terrible. Yeah, yeah, you know? they're like they're the bad guys. You yeah. know, for lack of a better term, they're the bad guys. The Umbra witches you would think are the bad guys mm-hmm. are kind of the good guys. Yeah, you know, or the you know they're the, the decent ones. You know, I don't know if they're claiming to be good, but you know, maybe neutral, but they're good. Yeah. They're they're decent. You know, and I, I think the, it's cool that like they don't really fuck with humans per se. Mm-hmm. Like obviously Balder, he fucking killed Luca's dad. Yeah, he just didn't really give a fuck. Exactly. You know? Like, yeah. hey, like this is my goal. If you get in my way, mm-hmm. you're dead. Although Jean did crash a fucking plane onto the highway, probably killed a shit ton of people. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I think a lot of people were killed. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people um, were definitely killed. Fucking skyscrapers just being lifted off of the earth. Yeah. Yeah, no. That was crazy. Again, can't say that enough. Like, the scale of the fucking boss fights were pretty epic. It was epic, Again, yeah. you, at one point, like you said, they literally had a skyscraper just being that just was, yeah. thrown. That's pretty dope. Um, what so was yeah. the question? Sorry, story. Yeah. What's you, your story? Okay, yeah. Overall. One to ten. What do you give it? It's unique. Um, it's pretty in depth. Um, I think overall, I'll give the story an eight. An eight, okay. Just because I, it, I just it's finicky. I think like yeah, once you've kind of grasped it, it's because there are plot it's, holes. It's pretty good, but I just can't. I don't know. I just I just personally don't like how the story was delivered. How it was told. Yeah, well, so, that's what I'm saying. It's like confusing. I'm I'm gonna give it a seven. Like it was, okay. it was good. It wasn't bad by any means, especially for like hack and slash games. Yeah, you know, other than God of War, Winter hack and slash stories really. That's true. You know, that good. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. And my, so we just you know we just scored three things there. Um, my score of the game is not going to be an average of those things because, right. you know, there's other things that we didn't go over that I'm taking into consideration. Mm-hmm. Like, again, the music was really good. We probably missed a bunch of stuff. Um, we covered a lot, but I'm sure there, there's we yeah. probably missed a few things. But, yeah, in general, your experience with Bayonetta, what do you score it? I'll give it a solid eight. I'll give it a solid, solid eight. eight. I really enjoyed it, and I'm very stoked to play the other ones. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. I'm stoked to play the other ones. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna give it an eight point five. Okay, that's solid. Eight point five schmackums. Schmackums. Schmack, I don't know. <laughs> that was the first thing that came to mind. Eight point five. Uh, what they, what they call the uh, when you 8. when you clicking on the button? Giga what or what the fuck was it? I can't remember. But yeah. Whatever that scale was. Yeah. Yeah. Solid game. Fucking go play it if you haven't. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, um, we had a lot of fun. Um, If you've actually played the game, I hope that, you know, we described it accurately. If you haven't played it, I hope that um, you still, you know, you may want to try it or you may play it even though we spoiled the entire game for you. <laughs> um, which this, you know, we had discussed earlier if we wanted to like spoil the game or have no, you know, no spoilers, but yeah. it's kind of hard. If you're listening to, to this episode, you have to, you know, think that yeah. well, there's going to be spoilers. And it's also you can't avoid 12 that. to 13 year old Exactly. Game, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's like trying to like talk about Dragon Ball Z without spoiling anything. Like, it's been out for so long. You couldn't. It's, that's literally impossible. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, hope you enjoyed our discussion on the game, and hope you uh, give it a try. It was a lot of fun. We had a good time. We're looking forward to playing the other ones. Um, any ideas on what we want to play next, or that would just be discussed? Well, we're episode. in the midst of playing God of War, so maybe at some point we can get maybe. around to that. Maybe God of War. It's pretty long. Um, I really would. I mean, this doesn't mean just us discussing. This doesn't mean that this is what we're definitely going to do. It's not right. set in stone. What I would like to do. Yes, I would love to get through God of War and maybe do an episode. Well, there's God of War Ragnarok. Ragnarok. There's definitely going to be a Ragnarok episode. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I'm yeah. not saying it's going to be next, but 
with Pokemon coming out next week. Oh, yeah. I would like to have a Pokemon episode. Oh, for sure. Because we, a game came out early this year that we were huge fans of. Um, Pokemon Arceus. Legends Arceus had a really good time. That's probably, bias aside, that's probably my favorite Pokemon game I've ever played. That's fair. And there's a lot that I haven't played, you know, to be, to also be fair. Um, I, I miss some, but that was my favorite Pokemon game of all time. And I have a lot to say about it. <laughs> and with Pokemon coming out, Scarlet and Violet next week, I would love if we did a like Pokemon episode. Oh, yeah. Um, I got feedback on that first little Pokemon segment. People liked it. Um, so maybe we can do that again. Yeah. Maybe come up with some other Pokemon segments. Um, we're big into TCG, like Pokemon trading card game. Um, there's a lot of Pokemon news and, and shit yeah. to talk about. So like yeah, I nearly think Pokemon, anything Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. I think a Pokemon Easy. episode would be awesome. Yeah, for so, sure. That is my vote. So who knows? You may see that that could be your next episode or it could be a, a future episode. Future for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Either way you'll you'll see it soon. Um one last thing I wanna say. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? I do. <laughs> Are you going to back me up or are you going to be an asshole? <laughs> what about of, your asshole? Speaking of asshole. <laughs> All right. So a funny story uh, real quick. So I have not gone back and like watched or listened to our last two podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I was here. I felt like I was here. I've recorded it. Like, I don't really need to. Like, I know what I look like. I've already kind of seen the angles. You've showed me, like, the intros and stuff, little, you know, bits here and there. Like, I feel like I'm fine. Um, So my girlfriend comes up to me, and she's like, did you? Um, I can't remember the context. We were probably just talking about the podcast. Yeah. Um, like, whether she had watched through or finished it or not. She was like, have you listened to or watched the podcast? I'm like, no, I haven't. She was like, do you know what he said when you went to the bathroom? I was like, no. What did he say? I'm pretty sure he was just, I don't know, just fucking talking about something. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure at the moment I said you were probably talking about this, that. but mm-hmm. So <laughs> I bring it up to you, and you actually show me the clip. <laughs> you tell them that I can find it in you, that during the <laughs> Halloween party, I shit my pants you did no don't you do it (laughs) i did not shit my pants i have there's three bathrooms in this house everyone at the party's only used the one downstairs i got two up here there's no way i'm shitting my pants what if you what if you gotta like let it out what if you got like a little shark what was going on for me to be like for me to shit my pants maybe you were laughing and you're just like i was laughing that hard. let out a little poot and it just releases, dude. Sometimes uh, you don't have control of your sphincter, and that's okay. To be fair, people are going to believe what they want to believe. I'm telling you now, I did shit my pants. I haven't shit my pants in over two months. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. Oh, God, I didn't see the, that coming. <laughs> during the Halloween party, I did not shit my pants. Again, please believe me, I didn't. Believe what you want to. Robert... You're a real meanie. You're a real jerk face. <laughs> I saw we. No. I so saw we. I have respect for that. That was funny as fuck. So I can't be mad. <laughs> but um, that's it, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. That was a uh, hardcore yep. podcast, episode three, side quest number one, Bayonetta. Let's go. Good as fuck. Peace. <laughs>